I was right here at about age nine, my buddy and I came down here and went to that far end. It was a beautiful spring day in March or April, and it was about 60 degrees, and that far end was open. And so we actually swam out there. I had a 100 pound Chesapeake Bay Retriever named Grizzly, my main mate. And we'd come down here all the time and do all kinds of stuff like fishing. Anyway, I threw a rock out. And right about where that snowball landed, Grizz was going across the ice and retrieving the rocks. Now he was a retriever, so I'd always throw out sticks and rocks and anything and he'd go get them. He'd bring a big old rock right back in his mouth. Well, right about where I threw that snowball out, maybe approximately 35, 40 feet out, Grizz fell through the rotten spring ice. And at first we didn't think anything of it, but then he tried and tried to claw his way back out onto that slippery ice. And no matter how desperately he clawed, he would just stay there. And after 20 or 25 minutes, he was starting to tire out completely and he was beginning to die. He was calling out desperately. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, I, I hardly went to church a day in my life. I didn't know nothing about God or anything like that. And so we were at first screaming profanities because kind of that's what we did. But after about 30 minutes, it became really desperate. And even though I didn't believe, I called on a God that I did not believe in. God, help us! And being that I loved him so much, after maybe 30 minutes, well, after about 30 minutes, I could take his hollering for help and his desperation and his dying no longer. So I went out there to rescue him. I figured the ice water must be freezing cold, so I kept my thick jacket and my boots on. When I went out there, grabbed a hold of him to jerk his mighty frame out of that ice death, I myself fell in. And that which I thought would keep me warm became an anchor that was dragging me down to the bottom of the lake. These boots, this coat and everything. And I was doing my best to claw onto that ice, but it was a losing battle. And I was starting to sink myself. And my friend at that time, his family owned a motel in town and they had a swimming pool. So he was like a fish man. He was a really good swimmer. And he was a little smarter than I in that he took off all his outerwear and grabbed one of these willow branches around here and came out there to rescue me. I still remember him coming out and just looking at him and <laughs> in my and just looking at him in my own desperation. He stayed far enough away and he reached out that willow stick and I was able to grab it and get myself back onto the ice and back to safety. So then he and I are still in a great predicament because we're here along the edge with my dog still 35, 40 feet out there. So I thought, man, we can't go out there and rescue him. What in the world will we do? So we decided to get big rocks and logs and anything heavy. And we started breaking a channel out here. And we started breaking a channel out here, throwing rocks, throwing logs, doing anything we can desperately while Grizz was still almost dying. And after maybe about 15 minutes of diligent rock smashing and ice smashing and ice breaking and putting logs out there, we finally created a little channel and Grizz was able to swim to safety. I will always be grateful to my friend Dee for saving my life and to the God that I didn't believe in. Shore is pretty down here and I spent a good majority of my childhood down here fishing, hunting, messing around, doing whatever I could. And when my dog Grizz finally died, I buried him under those big evergreens, right? I buried him under that big evergreen right there at the far end of the lake.